All right. Recording in progress. You're good to go. Sweet. <clears throat> All right, man. Well, <laughs> it's uh, it's been a little bit, but, you know, welcome back to the BDSM podcast. The mm-hmm. booze deserves smoke and meats and... We are kind of continue our journey across the United States, man. We're we're what more than halfway through now, aren't we? Yes, sir. We're we're in the end, so we got to work our way through that stuff. And we are uh, back into the the middle of the country ish, kind of getting towards the western side of the country, and we're gonna hit New Mexico today. I'm so. excited. Yeah, I, I I feel like there's gonna be a lot of indigenous influence, Mexican influence. And, uh, you know, I, I've had a few of these things before, not in New Mexico, but, you know, I think it will be a pretty good thing to try. So, uh, well, we normally start off with everything. So the first thing is uh, safe word. And I think uh, we would be remiss not to take this one here. And I think our safe word today is going to be spicy. Yeah, get that spicy meat the ball. <laughs> spicy meat the ball. And then uh, the follow up to that question is: uh, You got anything in the cup today? Not in the cup, but in the bottle. Uh, from Heavy Seas Brewing Company, I have uh, the chocolate volcano, which is a chocolate wow. dessert stout. That sounds great. Mm-hmm. At, that sounds from- really good. From Heavy Seas Beer, Baltimore. Okay. And uh, this is one of the ones I was just in the mood for a stout one day, and I was picking up mead from the place that I get it, and I saw this, and I was like, that sounds really good. That sounds really good, man. And the taste test does confirm. And this works out for me, too, because we're recording late. And this is a nice dinner beer. So do this, finish this beer, and then uh, call it a night, I think. Hell, yeah. Well, we had uh, we had some people over. And uh, so I'm not drinking a, a beer, but I am drinking uh, some champagne because we had some leftover bottles. And we kind of need to get rid of those things anyway. So it's not a dinner beer or dinner drink but you know it's it's working for me so i'll I'll take it now but did you do a uh, mimosas we did do some mimosas yeah do you love me so mimosas. that's i mean you, you can't not have mimosas when people are over for brunch right right <laughs> so but uh well i guess we can move forward man mm-hmm. so uh I, th- I think the first thing that I want to talk about is is a breakfast item, and I've never had this before, but I feel like it would taste really damn good, and it's it's a blue corn pancake. Mm-hmm. This and, is actually I mean, one of the first things that I pulled up too, and uh, I have to agree. I do love me some blue corn um, tortillas, and so yeah, this is already sure. like right up my alley. So. Uh, the blue corn tortillas, I mean, that just tastes pretty damn good. So I can imagine, you know, mixing it with some flour and then, you know, having that pancake into there and then throw some syrup on it. Yep. <clears throat> so, I mean, it just improves everything, right? It does. You know, so, there's going to be a day where they make blue corn beer. I'm sure there's probably already a blue corn beer, man, or something fermentable. Let's see what the old Google machine says. Yeah, what does the old Google machine say? I'm pretty sure there's probably something that says, hey, we have done something mixed with blue corn. Yeah. There is actually a blue corn lager from Confluence Brewing Company out of Iowa. And, uh, I mean, Iowa. Average rating or the average score on that is 84. So, you know, it's a, a passing score. And, uh, you know, 6.4% ABV. So I can't really complain about that. And out of all the loggers, especially the light styles, it is ranked number 12. Okay. 
So yeah. So so what would you want with your blue corn pancakes? Would you just do a short stack, or would you want like eggs and stuff with it? Now, see, I am for breakfast this morning. We had Bob Evans, right? And I got okay. that double meat farmer, which is like eggs. I got extra bacon on there. I got some hash browns, and I had a, a short stack with it. And especially when trying new pancakes that may be hit or miss, I think I would go with a short stack on this. And then if I really like it, I know next time to order a full stack. Yeah, see, but pancakes like sit in your stomach. They do. You know, if if I'm going to go for breakfast and have something like this, I'm either A, going to get a short stack and that's all I'm going to eat, or I'm going to not have that because I feel like eating an omelet and all that other stuff and then getting some pancakes into, into it afterwards is just, my stomach gets so full. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely need to go power lifting an hour after you eat that for sure. <laughs> get all the carbs going. Get, get all the carbs out. <laughs> but yeah, I, th I think they would be pretty damn good. So it's a it's a good thing to have in New Mexico, mm -hmm. which again, I feel like there's a lot of influences of you know indigenous populations and even just regular corn would probably be just as good. But um. They also do a breakfast burrito, too, that I guess is super popular. Hmm. And so is that at it's, the same restaurant? Uh, where I found this didn't say that it was uh, in the same same restaurant. But you know what? I feel like you could probably find those um, the, the blue corn pancakes just about anywhere, right? The, uh, the one that I'm looking at recommends uh, going to Santa Fe at the Tecolet Cafe. That's T E C O L O T E. Yeah. So now what was <laughs> what kind of syrup or topping would you have on this? Would you go like a regular maple? I would probably do maple syrup for it, but you know what? A blueberry sounds pretty good too. Yeah. I was almost <laughs> thinking not using syrup, but just putting a little honey on top of that. Yeah, honey could work. So, but, um, yeah, this, so this breakfast burrito, uh, potato, egg, cheese are the core ingredients. So that alone already sounds great. Yeah. A burrito and after then, my own heart. Man, well, wait, wait, man, because then you know what you can do. You can upgrade that shit with bacon, chorizo, or even have the carne, uh, adobe. Mm. So... Man, add in some chorizo, get a little spiciness to it. That'd be pretty damn good. So you said something here, and it's not something I'm super familiar with. What is this carne adobada? Uh, I, so from what my research is, is that it's basically um, pork. Okay. What they do is they marinate it in like a red chili and onion and a, a bunch of different spices for at least 24 hours. Ooh, so you get a, a nice chili spice, you know, um, flavor behind it. So it's it's a pretty big staple, at least in New Mexican food, from what I gather. Hmm. But throw that bad boy in a breakfast burrito with some eggs on top. Like, pfft, let's do this. Yeah. And, I ever uh, tell you that story about the chorizo that... Uh, the wife wound up giving our dog. Mm -mm. Oh, man, this is a funny story. So it does involve chorizo. So we have our poodle, and um, the wife wound up – this was while we were dating, so this wasn't even before we were married. And uh, she wound up giving the dog some chorizo, being like, oh, yeah, here, you, you, you know, you'll enjoy this. Dog wound up shitting everywhere in her closet after eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that and must be like, that Taco yeah. Bell. <laughs> no more chorizo for you. <laughs> yeah. it's fucking and funny. For those of you who don't know, uh, carne asada versus carne adobada. The carne asada is basically thinly sliced pieces of steak. So, versus the adobada being pork based. 
Yeah. But you know what? You probably could find steak and or even chicken because, you know, like pastor, mm -hmm. uh, it's same, similar stuff, you know? Right. But, man, I would totally get that breakfast burrito and just hand down on that. So, and then I guess you can get an egg on top. Ooh. So I would probably do it like over easy or sunny side up or something so that that yolk kind of goes all over it too. Yeah. <clears throat> but do you, uh, you happen to find anything breakfast stuff or did you happen to go find something else? I think those so, are the two breakfast ones that I came up that I found. Now for me, all right, because I'm a man who loves his sweets, right? Yeah. So what is essentially a snickerdoodle has a name um by another name. Do you remember what that name was? Uh it was like Bisco something. Yeah. Right? Is that what that what you sent me earlier? Yeah. Which this is apparently the state cookie of New Mexico. <laughs> Ooh, um, okay. It says they're closely related to Sandy's. I know these more as snickerdoodles, where they are essentially flour and shortening, and then you top with cinnamon and sugar. So. So what was that? The biscochito, right? Yeah, biscochito. Yeah. And. Uh, this recommends getting them at the Golden Crown Pander Panderia near downtown Albuquerque. See, apparently what I've been told is that New Mexico, there's only like three cities that you really want to go to. Yeah. And apparently Albuquerque is the better one out of all of them. But, you, you know, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and there's one more. And they said, don't even worry about the rest of New Mexico. So <laughs> I can kind of attest to that. Okay. As I've been to New Mexico. Um, I have too, but I, I didn't stay very long. Now, I went there because there is a private Boy Scout ranch, uh, Philmont, New Mexico, right? Okay. And so at the age that I went, it wasn't like essentially us tasting a bunch of food and like going places. We were essentially on a trail for two weeks, hiking up mountains and stuff. Um. You didn't have the the uh, the camp counselor touching you in inappropriate places, did he? No. <laughs> okay. So, but um, we took a train ride out there, right? And like when we got to New Mexico, it was like almost every town could be classified as either a ghost town or like a blink and you miss it kind of town. <laughs> okay. So, like, old Western, I actually thought it was really cool, and I would love to go back to New Mexico and visit some of those places. Um, But sadly, that's just not on the cards anytime in the future. Yeah. Interesting. All right, well, back to that cookie, man. That, that cookie sounds like it would be freaking something to eat all year round. Yeah. But see, like... I love me sweets in the morning. So like if I could get donuts or cookies in the morning for me, that and like a cup of coffee, that right there is a breakfast. Yeah. So like I said, not necessarily a breakfast, but also a breakfast. And then um, to kind of like go on from breakfast to like either a snack type lunch or, you know, depending on the serving size, an actual meal is I think we'd be remiss without saying the Frito pie. Oh, yeah, man. Actually, the wife had a Frito pie last night for dinner. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you got chili, you got the Fritos, uh, I mean, cheese. Nope. Yeah, where can you go wrong with something right. like that? Now, do now, you know if there's a difference between this and like a walking taco? Or are they essentially the same thing with different names? Oh, that, so that was going to be my question to you. So, I mean... I've seen the walking taco version where you have all that stuff in your, uh, you know, in the Frito bag, but yeah. I've also seen plenty of restaurants where I'm at that serve it just right in a bowl. Mm -hmm. So I kind of feel like you can do it as like a walking taco Frito pie, mm -hmm. but I also feel like 
man, if you're traditionally looking at that, it should be served like chili. Yeah. And that's one thing that they actually recommend is that enjoy this crisp and salt corn chips blanketed in the red chili sauce topped with beans, ground beef, cheese, and lettuce to start off with the fork. And then essentially after those chips start to disintegrate on you, switching to a spoon and eating it like a chili. Yeah. So, so this is one of those meals that the spork works out for. (laughs) <laughs> but i guess if you want it to go or if you want it on the go you can just throw it in the bag right yeah so but yeah i, I think the frito pie is is gonna be a a pretty good one but you know what you can get frito pie basically in the south anywhere i mean where i'm at yeah you can find plenty of restaurants that do that so there were for a while when I was in high school, they would serve Frito pies at the concession stands for sporting events. So, but so, they called them walking tacos. But yeah. yeah. So I wonder what makes New Mexico more of the Frito pie. Like, why is that? Was it invented in New Mexico? I, I didn't see anything in my research talking about that. Maybe so, it's just something that's really popular. Santa Fe and Texas both lay claim to uh, inventing the Frito pie. Yeah, okay. Um, Each side does have arguments and documentation to prove it, but um, eventually the answer is, who cares? Because this thing is so good that, you know what, you you both can take accolades for this, and I'll be perfectly fine with that. All right, fair enough. So I think one that's that's probably pretty similar to that too that I feel like you can get in Texas or you can get in uh, New Mexico is going to have to be some tacos, man. Yep, especially with the blue corn shell. Yeah, well, I think that would probably make it more towards New Mexico, New Mexico style. But if you get just... I think a, a lot of the soft shell tacos, the flour ones, are probably the most popular. Yeah. I don't know. When when you go get tacos for Taco Tuesday, do they ask you, do you want uh, flour or corn? They do usually ask flour or corn, and I yeah. always choose corn. See, I switch it up every now and then, but I'll I'll mainly get flour just because I like the soft shell. That's and I like wrapping it up like a little burrito so I don't have to worry about anything falling out. Yeah. <laughs> but so when you, what do you get for your tacos? What's your, your go-to? So if I'm getting tacos, I usually go for the street taco option, and I just get one of anything that's not usually like super common. So if they have like barbacoa, um, I might do like a barbacoa um, – then I'll do like a habanero mango style one where it's, you know, you've got like chicken in there, but the main main ingredient that's going to come through is that mango habanero flavor. Oh, yeah. And then um, usually I'll go with like a safe option for my third. Um, and usually in that I take a carne asada. So the last couple ones that I've been going for – um the place that we go to it's it's dollar 50 tacos on on tuesday so i usually get a brisket which i mean kind of known for where where i'm at yeah and then i'll do like a carne asada or a fish okay because they got great like green chili sauce and stuff on it you know Mm -hmm. So Fish tacos where I'm at are going to be super hit or miss. If I was down south, I would supplement probably the carne asada for a like a mahi mahi style taco. Oh yeah, hell yeah. So because shrimp tacos, especially where I'm at, like I said, can be super hit or miss. And then like the fish that they use in them tends to again be hit or miss. But I've never been disappointed in a mahi mahi taco. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, so I'm wondering with New Mexico, what are they are they sticking with? Are they sticking with that uh, adobo one, or are they sticking with you know pork or 
uh, or car, you know, carnitas or something like that. Yeah. Based on everything I'm seeing, they're going with the more. Sorry. Pork and steak based. Okay. So. Well, the the brisket. However, and the, uh, I am the... seeing like a vegetarian option where it is essentially just chilies. I mean, I guess if it's the only thing on the menu, I could probably eat that, but it wouldn't be my number one. Uh-uh. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. And don't get me wrong, I love me some chilies. Oh, of course. So. Can't go wrong with chilies, you know? Like, mm-hmm. But especially green chilies. Yep. You know, I, I think that's the other thing that kind of is a big thing in New Mexico, too. And, and honestly, t- Texas, too, is like the red and green chili sauces. Yep. You know, like you go to any Mexican joint down here, and you're going to have both of those. And I feel like the same thing happens in New Mexico, too. Mm-hmm. Just because that's part of the culture and part of everything that if you get chips and dip served to you, you're also having some some green sauce with uh, with some red sauce, too. Yep. And, and, uh, and I don't know. The green sauce to me is a little bit uh, hotter. Yeah. I don't, I don't know about you. Yeah tends to be made more with love. <laughs> so, But apparently something I didn't know is that flame roasted green chilies are so popular in New Mexico that okay. you can essentially just go into the grocery store and they are there flame roasting them for you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. If they are often still warm when you get them and they're like dumped into a container for peeling or selling whole i'm trying to think of like what would be a good thing to have with that you know like you can make your own sauce so i wonder if like a a soup or something is part of that well one that i don't think you or i would have thought of is green chilies tend to be a super popular pizza topping. No, oh, yeah. I I mean we we think of like jalapenos and stuff and people put that on there, but yeah, I could see green green chilies doing that. Mm-hmm. So and apparently Dion's or Dion's is the state favorite family friendly pizza joint. So that is where they recommend to uh go and they recommend trying this on the um Hawaiian style pizza that they do. Okay. <laughs> I feel like they would put green chilies just about on anything, right? Because yeah. I think I saw something about a green chili cheeseburger. I yes, I did see that. Yeah, so you know, I guess you can either put it on a sauce or you can even just chop the chilies up and throw them on. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I think depending on how I feel, I, I might want it in a sauce if it's going to be like a Mexican burger, you know? Yeah, actually, um, the green chili cheeseburger started in the 1940s at the Al Bar, which is about <laughs> okay. an hour south of Albuquerque. Um, and apparently the hungry working scientist in that area requested more than just bar snacks when they had their evenings off. And one grill with local produce decided to make the green chili cheeseburger. Be like, here you go. Mm-hmm. Eat them, suckers. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, another good place to get it is the Buckhorn Tavern. Is that like a renowned tavern for the, the green chili cheeseburger? Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I think that would be a, a good thing. So so what else do you think you'd put green chilies on? I'm just curious to know what your thoughts are since they already put it on a on a cheeseburger, they already put it on some pizza, and obviously you got that stuff on like tacos and whatnot. But what's something that you feel like is not a normal thing that you would put green chilies on? I'm actually seeing people put it on top of omelets. Okay, I can see that. Yeah. Which, like, I love me some Frank's Red Hot with my eggs, so if you're just going to throw some spice on top of that, I'll take it. Fair enough. 
I feel like you can probably put that up over some rice and uh, I'm not going to say chili, you know, like I'm trying to think of what else you could probably put over rice. Yep. Well, there's one place that makes a special green chili sauce. Um, it's called Chili Nirvana. It's uh, northwest of Albuquerque at Sadie's. Okay. And uh, it's a vegetarian green chili sauce because we were just talking about vegetarian tacos. Yeah. And that's exactly what they put in them. Hmm. So. All right. Yeah. And the way they cook it, it's described as the chilies are blossomed into full potency without the richness of meats to distract from them. So. (laughs) Another thing that I think you and I are both missing out on, and it's not particularly green chilies, but chilies and chocolate. Yeah, you know, I've um I've never had that before, but I heard that it's a good combination. I've had it and it is very good. A lot of the times it's just dark chocolate and it's got like red chili um like powder if you will sprinkled on top of it. Okay. Sometimes even baked into the bar itself. And if you like sweet and spicy, uh it's the place to go. And apparently they're also doing it in a gelato style. So. I mean, see, when I'm thinking of spice, I'm not thinking of doing it in a gelato. Yeah, I'm not either, but I just thought that was interesting. Let's see. I mean, I'm with you where I like the sweets, and I just don't know if I want to put a pepper in with my donut, you know, or my or my ice cream. <laughs> That doesn't sound something for me. I just, you know, it is what it is. More power to you if you want to have that sweet and savory. Yep. A uh, Another thing, and I'm sure you've seen this in, like, every grocery store, but, like, vegetable melodies? Yeah. So up here, you're usually going to get, like, peas, carrots, you know, your basic stuff, some lima beans. Yep. But in New Mexico, they go for zucchini, corn, and green chilies. And they call it a uh, little medley. Cala, calabacitis? Calab- calabacitis? I don't really know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Here, I'll give you a shot at it. I'll link it in chat. Uh, calabacitas. Yeah. Yeah, calabacitas. My, uh, my southern influence is running off on me. <laughs> Your northern gringo is coming out, right? Yeah. So, an- <laughs> another thing I just saw is, um, remember we talked about apple pie a couple of episodes yeah. back? Yeah, we talked about apple pie a while back, yeah. <laughs> Green chili apple pie. Oh, man, I don't know if – I think I would probably have a bite of that, but I don't know if I would have a full slice. Right. I mean, uh, apple pie is not my number one. I think we've talked about this before. I mean, I like pumpkin pie and, you know, other ones along that road. But um, apple pie, I can see how it works, though. I can If you have a tartness of maybe like a Granny Smith apple, mm-hmm. put that with a little bit of some chili. Yep. You know, you get a little sweet and spicy type deal going. Yeah. And apparently, it's actually surprisingly mild when you bake it in that form, so it's not as potent as it normally is. Yeah. And uh, apparently, there's a town called Pie Town. (laughs) And there are three spots where you can get the uh, the, this green chili apple pie, but they recommend Pioneer. Pioneer, right? Like P-I-E hyphen capital O hyphen (laughs) N-E-E-R. Pioneer. That's great. Right? (laughs) So. Well, there's another one that's, I mean, I feel like New Mexico is just the chili state, right? Like that should be their Mm -hmm. um, unofficial tagline because 
it seems like everything has got chilies in it over there. Yep. Now, if we want to swap colors over here, you know, going to different gang territory, you and I both love tamales. Well, yeah. Red chili pork tamales. Yeah, I think I saw that in my uh, in my research. That looks pretty good. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, whenever the Mexican lady always says, hey, I'm making tamales, you know, here's a baker's dozen for like 12 bucks. You're like, dude, give me give me three dozen <laughs> yeah like i'm I'm not ashamed <laughs> i'll take three dozen please yep so the red the red chili pork i'm assuming that it's it's used with the red chilies with that pork and then it's marinated in it yeah and then it's smothered in the red chili sauce so i uh did we talk about the first time you ever ate a tamale? i was gonna i was gonna bring it up out of my own embarrassment not knowing that you were supposed to peel the husk off and eating the husk. And it's like, these are really good, but they're kind of crunchy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And then someone's like, bro, you, you got to unwrap it, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Don't mind me. That was just me being loco gringo. Yeah, I was going to say that. Hey, gringo. <laughs> yeah. So I I wonder if they sell out just like normal tamales. I mean, any any time I have heard about it, it's like, oh yeah, we make like ten dozen of them, and they all get sold out super fast. Oh yeah, they have to. So and it's always great too because you know damn well it's some like Mexican grandmother that's been doing this for years, and you know her blood, sweat, and tears is in the recipe, and you know definitely those tamales are going to be delicious yeah <laughs> so they so. recommend going to el modelo or modelo here um yeah okay and they're like they they state be prepared for a line or only a few tables to sit at because they only do like takeout orders and large festival orders okay so that's when you know it's a a good a good tamale when there's a line. Now, I think there's something that's pretty close. It's not with the husk, but I know that Texas does this, and we'll probably talk more about it when we get to Texas as well. But the uh, enchiladas, I I guess New Mexico does some pretty good enchiladas, and they do a red cheese one. Mm -hmm. So, So, yeah, I don't I don't know where the red comes from. I'm assuming that it's the the chili, right? So I'm not seeing the red enchiladas. I am seeing a blue corn enchilada served with eggs for breakfast. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. So. Well, yeah. So so what I'm seeing is that they use the red chili sauce, and then that's where that comes into the enchilada because it's poured on top, and it kind of like stains the enchilada. Yeah. So I guess it's right next to, and I mean, again, when I think of Mexican food for myself, and it's not my, my number one go-to, but for the wife it is that she could eat that breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know, she gets enchiladas sometimes, and I mean, I've had them a few times, and they're not bad. Mm-hmm. So, but I, I prefer burritos, and I prefer uh, fajitas, but... You know, I'd get an enchilada. Screw it. Let's do this. <laughs> right? Yeah. The uh, the enchilada is very tasty. Very, very tasty. Yeah. So, interesting. Mm-hmm. I think we will kind of come back to some of these when we start talking about Texas. And I think that might be a two-parter. But I feel as if... You know, enchilada, I feel like uh, tamales and tortillas and stuff like that are all going to come back to kind of chat about how that has that influence, especially from Mexico. So, uh, I don't know, man. Do you, I, I think that's a lot of the stuff kind of with New Mexico. Do you have any other ones that you might want to mention? There was a dessert that I thought you were going to bring up. Oh, which one was that? You know what it is. It starts with an S. 
Uh, the what? The Sopapilla? Yeah. Yeah. So that's the other thing. Like, it's it's a uh, fry bread. Mm -hmm. so essentially what they do is they just get some dough batter and they drop it into the deep fryer and it, it looks like a pillow and i mean that's kind of what it is if you if you've ever seen a picture of it and uh they usually put some honey on top to slather that bad boy in and then all you do is just dive right into it but now i i heard that you can also have savory ones too so it's not a dessert soap appeal but you can have uh you know other other ones that won't be as sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me see if I can look up that one. Uh, is it was it this one? No, it's not that one. Um I think it's this one. Yeah, here we are. Oh. Going past all the other ones. Yeah, so um, they, they can either be served savory or sweet. So a lot of the savory ones are stuffed with cheese, beans, and meat. So you can have, you know, like your carne asada, or you can have your pork and stuff that in there. And they usually have cheese melted on top with the red sauce and lettuce and tomato and all that stuff. But you could also do the, the fried dough with honey and it's yeah. just drizzled right on top. So, yeah, you could do a, a sweet and savory. I, I think for me, I would do sweet. I would probably do sweet, too. I feel like I might try a savory one just to say I did. But I think if I had to keep on choosing between what I wanted, it would probably be the, the sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. But I I think that kind of goes over everything, don't you think? I would I have to have agree. Any other ones. Yeah. It was mainly green chilies and blue corn. Yeah, I know, right? And I'm okay with that. <laughs> so do you want to bring us on out? Well, I brought us in. How about you bring us out? Sounds good. Hope you've had a spicy good time with us in today's episode where we cover New Mexico. See um, what you did there. <laughs> yeah. This has been the BDSM podcast. Uh, if you could, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a like, share this around, give us a subscribe. And uh, I have been one of your hosts, the Meat Viking, with my wonderful co-host. Professor Porkline. And we'll see you all in the next one. All right.